In December 1916, after leading the successful counter-offensive in Verdun, French General Robert Nivelle was promoted Commander-in-Chief of the French Armies of the Western Front. Nivelle prepared a massive joint offensive for 1917. The French would lead the main assault on the Aisne River, while the British would launch a diversion attack near Arras. At first, British generals were reluctant to be placed in a secondary position, but Nivelle promised to break through within 48 hours, and his enthusiasm blew away any remaining doubt. The goal was to link up with the British offensive and pierce the German front line once and for all. The French assembled 1,200,000 men and 7,000 artillery pieces for the offensive. However, these troop movements did not go unnoticed. Through aerial observation and information gathered from prisoners, German commanders understood that a major offensive was underway. On February 9th, they counted the planned offensive and launch Operation Albere. During their withdrawal, to avoid the French to use the terrain, they blew up all railways and roads, destroyed all villages and cut down all trees. This allowed to shorten the front line 40 kilometers and provided German reserves with an extra 14 divisions. General Franchet des Prés asked permission to attack the Germans during their risky maneuver, but Nivelle refused and the Germans slipped away. An increasing number of French generals grew concerned at the planned offensive. They claimed the element of surprise had gone, and the new German reserves was alarming, as they could easily counterattack. Meanwhile, in the north, the Canadian Corps was facing Vimy Ridge. The Canadian Corps was led by British General Julian Bay. All four Canadian divisions faced a 7km front with the Vimy Ridge ahead of their position. The sector remained calm throughout 1916 and it gave time for the Germans to fortify the hill with concrete bunkers and reinforced trenches. Major General Curie visited French officers in Verdun after the battle. Together, they concluded that during the 1916 offensives, not enough autonomy was given to platoons. When an officer was killed, the entire unit would cease moving as it was left without orders. Canadians prepared the assault on Vimy Ridge rigorously. For the first time, all Canadian units would fight side by side. Attack tunnels were built to bring soldiers as close as possible to German lines. Some were even equipped with water and electricity to ensure a swift victory. They took aerial photos and recreated German trenches in real life size. After weeks of practice, Canadians knew the enemy train system by heart. Additionally, every sergeant was given a map of the offensive and enough information for him and his unit to continue the attack on their own if necessary. General Holm of the British First Army transferred most of his heavy artillery to the Canadians to ensure the success of their mission. Seven out of nine artillery groups were manned by British gunners, 30,000 in total. German General Ludwig von Falkenhausen was responsible for the Vimy sector. He was 76 years old in 1917. He participated in most battles of the 1870 Franco-Prussian War such as Gravelotte, Sedan and the Siege of Paris. On the 2nd of April, 1 million shells were fired on the German positions. On the 2nd of April, 1 million shells were fired on German positions. He quickly understood that an offensive was underway. The bombardment destroyed communication trenches and prevented supplies from reaching the front lines. German soldiers were left without food or water for days. Decent sleep was impossible under the pouring shells. Morale was low. However, Falkenhausen was confident that his reserves would counterattack in time against the imminent assault. One Canadian observer records that the shell poured over our heads like water from a hose, thousands and thousands a day. Germans named this period the Week of Suffering. In total, 170,000 men faced Vimy Ridge. Amongst them, 97,000 of the Canadian Corps. They were supported by the 5th British Division. Facing them, the 1st Bavarian Division, the 79th Reserve Division and the 16th Infantry Bavarian Division. 10,000 German soldiers were entrenched on the ridge and 20,000 were kept in reserves. On Easter Monday, April 9th, at 0530, 980 heavy artillery guns and 120 mortars unleashed their creeping barrage. On the right flank, the 6th Battalion of the 1st Division launched the assault on the flat 4km front line. They faced little German resistance. At this point, most were shell-shocked or dead. The forward positions were easily captured. However, Canadian soldiers were slow to move as they were stuck in the plowed mud. They reached the black line 45 minutes later. Meanwhile, 700 Montrealers of the 14th Battalion were tasked to clean up the remaining trenches. 
recovering from the shell shock, four German machine guns opened fire on them and before the machine guns could be shut down, 265 Montrealers laid flat, killed or wounded. The first wave resumed action after a 40 minute break from the black time. The assault became disorganized but small groups managed to defend from the room. The increased autonomy given to the teams worked well. The first Canadian brigade arrived in reinforcement for the second wave. They attacked the red line under the cover of fire and smoke from the neighboring village of Tillus. They only faced demoralized German units and captured their positions. By then, only two battalions of the entire division were still able to fight. On their own, they captured the Brown Line by 1226, and at 1300, the offensive was halted. The division advanced five kilometers in one day of combat, which was the greatest Allied advance in such a short time up to this point in the war. They also captured 2,500 Germans, but at the cost of 2,500 killed and wounded. The second division, originating from Western Canada, faced the village of Toulouse and the woods of Hill 135. The British 13th Brigade was kept in reserve with eight tanks. However, the tanks could not be used because of the mud. At 5.30, the 18th and 24th battalions were hit by heavy machine gun fire. Despite German resistance, they reached the black line by 6.10 and rested. The 21st and 25th battalions avoided enemy strongholds and captured the red line, while the French Canadian 18th and 20th battalions cleaned up the remaining trenches. The supporting British and Canadian brigades advanced through a second wave and attacked Hill 135. A soldier of the 6th brigade recalls, wounded men were sprawled everywhere in the slime, in the shell holes, in the mine craters, some screaming to the skies, some lying silently, some begging for help some struggling to keep from drowning in water-filled craters. The field swarming with stretcher bearers trying to keep up with the casualties. The British managed to capture the heights and the Canadian found the village of Telus empty. The German contested Hill 135 but were ultimately pushed back. At 1400, the 2nd Division stopped its offensive. The 3rd Division faced steep slopes. Its objective was to capture the summit of the ridge. The 7th and 8th Brigade advanced on the ground through two tunnels. They stormed out and surprised the German defenders from behind. The Princess Patricia Battalion marched towards the enemy at the sound of bagpipes. At 6.25, Black Line was reached. German defenses were shattered and entire units retreated beyond the ridge. The 7th Brigade protected its flanks because the 4th Division was struggling. Major General Watson and his 4th Division had the hardest objective, Hill 145, the highest point of the ridge where Germans could see the entire Canadian Division advance below them. To make things worse, the artillery barrage failed to destroy the fortified defenses and concrete bunkers. At 5.30, the assault was launched and Hill 145 was to be taken by the 11th Brigade alone. From their elevated position, the Germans on Hill 145 fired at the flank of the advancing Canadians all over Vimy Ridge. Canadians reached the hill at 6.40, but only after bitter fighting, the 102nd Battalion suffered 314 casualties for it. The main problem came from Butter Trench. Division headquarters wanted to use this trench to further coordinate the assault, so the artillery was ordered not to fire on it. When the 87th Battalion approached Butter Trench, machine guns ripped it to pieces. To their left, a mine exploded in the German trenches facing the 12th Brigade, allowing them to swarm German defenses. The following day on April 10th, in late afternoon, two companies of the 85th Battalion of Nova Scotia Highlanders were tasked to raid Hill 145. It was their first time in battle, and they didn't even receive their traditional kills. At 1800, Lieutenant Colonel Borden preferred a quick action without artillery cover to keep the element of surprise. Out of a sudden, two companies of screaming Scots fixed bayonets and charged uphill. Within 10 minutes, they gained control of the summit of Hill 145. They lost 47 killed and 122 wounded, about 70% of their initial Highlanders. 20 Germans surrendered and 72 were killed, most shot while running away from the melee. On April 10th, the following day, the front line stabilized as German reserves managed to push the Canadians out of the village of Vimy. However, none of their multiple attempts to recapture the hill were successful. No major actions were recorded on the 11th. On April 12th, the 10th Brigade attacked the Pimple and thus officially ended the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The Canadian Corps completed all its objectives, but at a cost of 10,602 casualties, 3,598 killed 
and 7,004 wounded in only three days of battle, with most casualties suffered on the first day. They also captured 4,000 Germans and inflicted thousands of additional casualties. Field Marshal von Hindenburg removed Falkenhausen from his command for failing to use his reserves in time to counterattack the enemy. Germans did not consider the battle as a defeat as Allied forces were unable to break through and Germans simply accepted the loss of Bimi Ridge and withdrew to the OP Mericourt line. This is my first time doing this, hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave a comment below. You can also follow me on Instagram at History Legends.